So who do you decide who you want to work with at this point? Because I heard you were working with Bella Thorne. Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? That was ridiculous. Um, uh, Alex set it up, and then um, I was with her. I was like, that's cool, Bella Thorne. And, like, you go in these situations thinking, like, maybe I'll get – because you have to get something out of it. It's a job. Right. They don't realize, like, I get that she's doing movies and she's Bella Thorne and, like, making a living, doing what she does and has all – hey, I could do music today. Like, let me try that. It's a hobby, right? Right. But this is my job. Yeah. Like, I have a baby to take care of. I have myself. We have, like, a whole life. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Um, so it's not, like, just fun and games type thing, right? Right. So – um. And then, so I get there, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, maybe something will come out of it, maybe like either recognition or Instagram tag, anything, right? Whatever it is. You don't want to go right in and saying, I'm going to charge them this much for a beat. Right. You just want to make the music first or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then hopefully if you guys have a good relationship, they shout you, you out when it, it out drops. After, yeah. yeah, you figure it out after. And, um, but like, it dropped, and the vibe, like, I just felt like, I, I felt like I was doing it for no reason. Mm. Truthfully. And then also you bring a, a, like, if, so music is not her thing, right? She does movies. If I did movies and she was, if I, she asked me to do it, say if I, if I, we swapped roles, I'm about to do a movie with her and she's helping me do that, right? Mm. I wouldn't put no my input. I would just listen to her and do what she said, right? Right. But like, when making music with her, she's like not listening to the writer or kind of like putting a lot of her input. Right. Which I don't think that would work out. Fans, and they're not going to take it serious. Right. You got to bring, I think it should have been like, we bring in fucking writers and there's no input on your end. You listen to writers and we make the song. I mean, that's probably gonna when let the it musicians goes the best, do it, right? Like and when, then you just <laughs> imitate what we're doing. You're the face. Right. So then the, I already hear the record's not coming out how I expected it at all. And I just, um, I was like, well, what's going on? So I'm like, okay, maybe, you, so it comes out and maybe we'll get tagged. She didn't tag us. Uh-huh. Or anything, so it's like now let's just charge them shit of money for the beat. Yeah, and the, and you did. No, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, okay. I guess we have to. <laughs> but it must just feel I'm fucking not weird. That, I, right. This is my life. But I mean, it's a difference between like now you're working with this girl who was like a you know child star or whatever, and now she's this famous model, whatever. But I'm saying <laughs> like you used to be in the studio with people that were just your homies yeah. that were like real artists who are just. Doing like making good, art, good, good music that I yeah, enjoy, right? And that's different. I'm having, I'm, so I'm, I'm getting enjoyment out of it, mm. and I'm all, then it might lead to something. But like when I'm not enjoying making the music, because it's like it's an awkward vibe, and it's just like no one's listening to nothing, and it's kind of like right. It's but not taken serious. You see that dynamic unfolding more and more with different people who are trying to like make rap music now, but they're basically just famous people or like YouTubers or whatever, where they yeah. get a writer, they get a good producer, and, and if then, they do it good, they listened probably, right. Or they maybe well it then is, it becomes it, it kind of becomes a game of like who can just follow the the pattern that has mm-hmm. been put here like who can do the best job recreating this recreating. reference track or yeah you know and I don't have a problem with reference tracks I think that's tight I think it's cool when all these ideas come together and they make and like it makes a fucking machine hit record I'm always it's, it's actually like kind of impressive mm. when people listen. Right. And as, as you get close to the music industry, you start to realize that there's a lot of like extremely famous, well-respected artists who are basically doing getting the written. same exact thing. Yeah. Every, everything is getting written, it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy when you think about so much of the... Because the you got to make hit records. It's a fucking business. And I never realized yeah, that. Definitely. I never even thought this was a business. I'm like, I'm having fucking fun. Man. And sometimes when I listen, I'll listen to a rapper's album. I'm not going to say any names, but I've listened to rappers' projects and my reaction was like... He should have got writers, you know, like he really oh, should have got some writers to make now. this better. Yeah. Even especially lately, I haven't been so impressed with a lot of like music. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. I think it's, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm, I'm listening it with like in a resentful way. Uh-huh. I don't know. But, um, I don't know. I think I used to, I do, I do think that too. Like, I wish there were some writers on this. Right. Like or, if this, or this could have been better. That's why I thought when I listened to 6 9 I'm like, how did he not get somebody to write better songs for him? Because it's like, I don't really care about his own ability to right. make songs. I didn't expect him to be sitting in the yeah, studio for six months him. making the, the best album he could make. I know he's not that kind of guy. But like my reaction was like, I hope he wasn't stupid enough to actually to honest, I don't make even know this. if I listened to it. I listened to it one time and it was I was I think I listened to like two songs. I listened to it on my phone. I was blown away by how shitty it was. It was bad? Oh, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was so fucking dreadful. It put me in a bad mood for a little really? bit, yeah. It's one of them. Hey, did, did, are you going to interview him? No. If if he asked, would you do it? Nah. 
<laughs> just because you got to stay. Like, on one hand, it would be interesting because it would be fucking fun as fuck to call him out on shit. But then at the same, like, he wouldn't do it because he would know that that's exactly what I was going to do. But, like, during that album coming out, he tried to get interviews with everybody in hip hop and nobody would do it. Like, Breakfast right. Club said no. Really? That, that's why he did the Shade Room and he did fucking Logan Paul. <laughs> I just, like, talking about it, I can hear this man's voice in my head. Yes. Oh my god. They said he got a new single coming out. I'm very interested to hear that, to be <laughs> honest. Like they said it was called Shooters. No. Yes. And that that's what I all of a sudden got interested. Like, is this idiot really gonna try to make another gangster record? Oh my god. Yeah. Also oh. that's, that bums me out. What are your like real goals at this point in terms of like what you feel like you want to accomplish? Like you've you've made a lot of big moves in the game so far, but what are the things that you could do that would really stand out to you? I think uh I think uh, si- doing. Bi- I want to get more like do grown stuff, like maybe like signing more people mm. or like uh, setting what records up, not just making the beat, but having input on the beat, doing doing stuff on the beat, and then setting this artist up with this artist and doing that mm. more, like putting pieces together. And um, I don't know, right? And maybe uh, work just doing that and like lead to other businesses. Mm. Cause you know, one, I want something long term. I don't know, you know, you don't know long term music, is. right? Because like I, I was just thinking the DJ scheme, like the fact that he actually got this fucking album out and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's, that's like, tight. That's pretty dope because we haven't really seen anybody from like the SoundCloud sort of wave who is actually mm. able to really like navigate what you had to do to put out like a full compilation right. album featuring all yeah, these that's, people. That's it, what I want to do. I think it's a lot harder. I think than anybody would expect it's to like, be it's able to really make, get all those clearances on those records and i know there were records that he wanted on there that he didn't get at the last minute and shit yeah. with juice and x and shit yeah so it's things like that just putting things together um i actually want to just keep i want to work with new people like not even really big people but people that like kind of like how i was with tracy before mm. they, they, they blew up and like i want to just build more of those but i just want to kind of do that it's fun right building new relationships and uh I don't know, just making new sounds and stuff. It would be cool to work with the, the mainstream big people, obviously, but it's like, no expectations. With somebody like Youngboy, though, is it like... I want to work with Youngboy again. Does that stand out to you as like, I got to figure out how to make that shit happen I have a lot of shit again. with him, but uh, it's like, um, one got leaked. Uh, shit like that started happening. Have you had to deal with that a lot? Yeah, a lot of leaked records. Who the fuck was leaking it? You ever figured uh, it out? Some weirdos. <laughs> really? Oh, so it was people Probably. hacking your shit? It wasn't like some oh, dude the working one that there? Leaked the, oh, my God. This kid, this one kid leaked the, um, the young boy. He's like, we know him. Some goofy shit. Like, really? They can't, like, I, they want to show people they have a young boy record. Just wait till it yeah. comes out. You don't even have a young boy record till it comes out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because or any record. big records leak all the time, like big Drake records leak and shit, and they get like 20,000 views on YouTube by the hardcore fans. You don't fans. have a Drake record. Right, because it's never going to get pushed. That's one thing you realize about the music industry is unless the record label is behind it, it might as well have not happened. Nah. Because it's And that's just, what's stressful, you know. too, about going in with music. Sometimes I'm sitting there, and I'm like, God, I got to depend on the rapper rapping on the beat, then the getting cleared and all that or whatever. Mm. Then the record label wanting to, then him wanting to drop it even just to like, that's the whole living. That's like, damn, I kind of want to make sure throw it out on SoundCloud. Yeah, I'm used to that. Just like fucking, we just make some bullshit and put it up and then things go somewhere. It's funny how we all let SoundCloud die in front of us and nobody did anything to stop it. why, Why did it die? Because motherfuckers realized they could make money on streaming services. That's true. You know? And then the quality of music was getting good. Yeah. Now it's like things are getting, things are really good. There's a lot of records that are like legendary SoundCloud era records that weren't mixed or mastered or no, engineered in bad. any way. <laughs> it sounds so bad. Now yeah. like everything is like, dude, when you're going to drop, like these people will drop albums and that shit sounds fucking perfect. Even mm. the beat selection, the, the everything about the song, it's really good. Yeah, it's like more of an expectation now. Big expectation. That was kind of part of the thing in the, the Gucci versus Jeezy battle too. That was a lot of those old Gucci mixtape records were like <laughs> recorded in somebody's basement and nobody ever bothered through to go through and try to make that shit sound better that but shit's tight though it's kind of a vibe we watch it on our laptops on fucking youtube and nobody thinks about it you know yeah i don't know man um okay anything you want the people to look out for or anything uh in terms of, i appreciate you coming through and having this conversation honestly like the drug conversation me. is super fucking motivational and i really appreciate it because i just feel like there's so many kids that need to hear that shit. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that, like, that's out there as much as possible, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's like, uh, 
God, I lost my train of thought. No, that's okay. But I could talk about drug shit all day. No, definitely. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just important that the kids have it. fucking people to look to. Like the same it's way that I, your old interview probably influenced some kids to well, think the drugs were tight. Now. Yeah, and now Not it's like it's still kind of tight, right? But it's like. Um, I don't know. Shit's not cool. Yeah. Like you could, it, there's, I want someone to know, like, if, if they're getting fucked up right now while they're watching this, that's cool and all. But, like, um, I actually never thought that I could feel pretty happy, not like how I do now sober. I never thought it was possible. Even when after I got sober a month after, I was like, there's no way I'm going to survive. And I truly feel happy listening to what other sober people did. Right. Like, if you're getting fucked up right now, go find help. Like, go to a 12-step program, whatever it is. I don't know. Just... It's possible. I'm just saying it's possible. Yeah. I don't want to promote it or nothing. No, but for real. like the, there's. I'm just saying my story, I actually never believed in it. And wh- yeah. wherever they're at, they ain't as far in as you were. Oh, no. No. I, was, I, went, I mean, I, I spent so much money. I mean, I had all. I mean, it was so much. I would spend a whole royalty check, $90,000 right. on drugs in three, three months. For real? Yeah. I mean, I was going hard. And then I'm also getting everyone else high. And I'm putting people, I'm taking hostages with me, right? Yeah. I mean, like, they don't even do the drugs I'm doing, but I'm like, you guys are going to do these shit. Holy they were doing it and all this shit. This is fire. Like, and then they're stuck in it. And yeah, it was, it's just, it was, I'm, I was going harder than I think anyone in the rap game even. Wow. I truly believe that. I mean, I kind of believe that strategically, too. and like, it was like planned. It was like I'm gonna fuck it up, and for on, and everyone's gonna feel bad for me. Right like in my head, I, it's fucking insane. We gotta put you up there next to DMX in the, the Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, he went pretty hard. He was doing different drugs. I think, but. I think <laughs> me and him, me and him would party good together. You never smoke crack? No, I for sure. Have. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my, that was my shit. Like, was it. like I'm not gonna lie. I don't I don't have no shame because it's like. I don't know. It's not me no more. No, but as long I could even picture myself right now doing that. Like I can't right. even believe. I don't even. It was. It's so fucking insane. But in order for your story to mean something, you have to fucking own up oh, to that shit oh, and dude, really I, talk thing, about my it. Thing you know, was full of fentanyl crack. Mm. But back to I mean, it was all day. Right then. I mean, right. people knew. I mean, I was doing this shit low key in front of people. Like it right. started getting out. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I mean, and that's another thing I don't get. Why do you judge someone like? Oh no, coke straight. You just snorting coke, oh, yeah. you're fucking good. But the if you're smoking that- this, literally, I felt so. I've gotten, I've done coke, and I thought I was gonna die. I've been to hospital more times for coke. Mm. I mean, I, so when I was smoking it, I didn't get the that um, anxiety feeling, and I wouldn't die that way. Mm. So I, I strategically did this shit, right? But it was just like, um, I just got around the wrong people and tried, and I just, dude, I wanted to fuck my life up that way. Right. I wanted to go all the way, balls deep, like. And it happened. And I, I'm all, I don't care. I own up to it now. If you start to get into that mind state of like being like, like calling out one drug is bad, but this one's it makes all right. No sense. You're going to be hypocritical within a Bro, short period drinking, of time. I've gotten more, any drug, I, any drug I've ever done. I've done all drug, ketamine, GHB, everything. Everything except acid. Really? Yeah. I don't like anything that's like psychedelic, but. Um, I don't blame it. Bro, drink. I've gotten more fucked up off of drinking alcohol than any of those other drugs. Mm. I mean, drinking alcohol is the most dangerous drug, I feel like. Uh-huh. I don't, I'm not even judging. I, well, it's the easiest it's to pre- access. Easiest to access. They're socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. But then, like, but I did this one, so you're going to judge me for that. Like, I don't get it. I don't, right. I, they're all fucking bad. Like, and it's not, they're not bad. Actually, I'm lying. They're not bad. The drugs aren't bad. That's like saying airplanes are bad. You could right. die in an airplane, you could die doing drugs. Right. It's the person. I am bad. I abuse it bad. Right. Like no, I know people who were alcoholics that had worse shit happen to their life because of alcohol than vast majority of the people would have off of heroin yeah. or whatever. It's like if you're going to take that drug, like really they're all just tools by which you're like inflicting this damage on yourself. Yeah. You and know? it's okay. If it, it, it's the up to me. It's me. I'm the problem. The drugs aren't the problem. Mm. Drugs are fine. Yeah. If you could do them normal. Good. You drink normal. You go out with your friends drinking. It's the person who's using them and how I use them. 